Have you ever wanted to see the moment the face of a digital cat in superposition with a British rodent starts to crystallise? There, it's that moment, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Instead, we should start off at the very beginning, as I've heard that's a good place to start. Welcome to Quen Image, which works great in Comfy UI. If you're looking to make workflows like these for yourself, then I start out with Browse Templates, and if you go to Image, this one is a modified version of Quen Image to Text, though of course it does image to image as well. Alternatively, you can get all of the workflows shown in today's video from my Patreon, which helps to support the channel, allowing me to continue making workflows and videos for you. There's lots to go through, and for workflows I use the rodent method, put stuff in boxes which you can then move around and clone as you feel. Thanks to KJ Nodes, you can also put them in little boxes, meaning you get less spaghetti as well. The model files you need are shown here, plus you'll get a pop-up when you open this or the example workflow, meaning all you need to do is click to download, but the links are there too if you prefer to do it another way as well. First up, maybe you're wondering about Quen versus Flux. I did a few tests and slapped a quick summary of my opinions into these notes. So basically, text rendering. Quen image is very, very good at text compared to Flux. It's also got a few more parameters, so you get a little bit more nuanced understanding in your prompts. And the native resolution is higher at 1328 by 1328. It's also a multilingual model, so you can use English and Chinese versus just English in Flux. And of course, best of all, it has an Apache 2 license. If you think Flux is faster, has better photorealism and more mature LoRa fine-tuning infrastructure and lower VRAM requirements, then you're probably right. However, Quen is overall slightly better for complex scenes, higher resolution, and remember that text, so just use each one, and they both have different strengths. I've also got a little prompting guide here, which I'll also show you in the images. So for quote wrapped text, if you put it in a little single quote, then most of the time it will get it right. You can also specify the type of font and how it's actually placed, such as etched or displayed. And then of course, the surface that the writing is on. Things that don't work so well are very vague instructions and trying to be too complicated with your prompt. If you're going over 200 words, then it may not turn out quite as well. I have some prompt example templates there as well. So if you want a text heavy poster, then you can use something like that. Alternatively, maybe a product or a logo integration, or maybe an infographic or a slide. If advanced prompting is more your thing, then I suggest using English first and maybe a little bit of Chinese afterwards, but don't mix them up too much. I find the best way to do things is start simple and then add more and more complexity and see what works. Okay, with that in mind, let's get into the simple workflow to start with, and then I'll move on step by step to some more complex versions. First up is loading the models, and you've got a choice here. This is the default one you get, the Quen Image FP8, but if you want to, you can also use a GGUF. City96 has provided both the loader and the model files, as you've got there in the notes. So if you've got a lower amount of VRAM, you'll need about 24 gig for this normally, then a GGUF is a good option. The note from Comfy says a 1490 takes around 94 seconds, which is roughly the same amount of time as the setup I've got here. There are three model files. You've got the main diffusion model, the clip, and also the VAE. Next up is the prompt. I really want a floating sign, so I've got this one as my prompt. Mind the gaps, written on a sign, which is smoothly blended in a cursive font. The sign is magically floating in the air, suspended by its own imagination above a strangely holographic brain-like structure. And of course, all the rest of the prompt there. You'll see what happens in just a moment and hence the guide we've recently been through should start to make sense. Also in this prompt, I've used double quotation marks rather than single. So can you guess what will happen? No negative prompt text for now, but I'll add some text in there later. The image size is just the default 1328, but you can go lower or higher if you like. 
Sampling is tote straightforward, and for this first example, I'm using CFG1 with Res Multi Step, as the comfy UI note suggests. As it's CFG1, 30 steps took around the same time as the Comfy 4090 note, with generation speeds of 2.3 seconds per iteration, taking just over a minute. The image it generates is this one. Did you guess correctly about the quotation marks? So see how if you use double quotes, it's going to include them in the text, but with single quotes, it doesn't. It also has a nice cursive font, and the colors do indeed blend nicely. Well done, Quen. But notice how the sign also steadfastly refuses to just float in the air without obvious attachment. It's added the two wires there, even though I was quite explicit that the sign was capable of breaking the laws of physics and could levitate. Oh well, we'll try and fix that later. Now that we've got the basics down, let's move on. I still have much the same prompt here, but I've changed the quotation marks. For the sampler, this time I've gone with CFG2 and switching the sampler to a new one. Also lowering the steps to 15 means it will take the same time as with CFG1 and 30 steps. How do you think the output is going to change? Yes, as usual, we have that more crisp sort of AI style painting compared to the more sort of actual painting style from CFG1. Still, its crisp cleanness doesn't look too bad and the quotation marks are no longer on the sign, which is still firmly attached to whatever that thing is at the top. Lots of things this time. So basically, this is doing a comparison of CFG1 versus CFG2 and some different samplers. In the first row, we've got DPM++ 3M SDE Simple. And oh, yes, one thing I also forgot as well is Sage Attention. So if you're getting black images, then maybe that's why. So black images, try turning Sage Attention off. Anyway, the image on the left is CFG1 and the image on the right is CFG2. They are very similar, and which one is more surreal? I think it's all up to personal preference, and I like them both. When using DPM++ SDE, there are slightly fewer artifacts than with the previous one from CFG1, and colourful writing on both. Take from that what you will. Using DPM++ 2M, the angle changes, and I think this one actually follows my prompt a little bit better because the brain is kind of down in the gap. Interestingly, this time, however, CFG2 has messed up the text a little bit and it's put those quotation marks at the beginning. In fact, it's got three of them. And in this row, it's DPM++ 2M again, but this time with the linear quadratic scheduler instead. There's a stark contrast in the writing between these two, isn't there? Look at the one on the right, very clean black, almost a bit too high contrast for my liking, but maybe that's what you're after. Nice. So with CFG steps, samplers and scheduler experience, we can now move on to more things like this new prompt. Here, I'm trying to break most of the rules and not have text just to see the sort of things it can make. This time then, I've got a very simple prompt about an image that knows it's being painted into existence, watching from the digital void using its own recursive awareness to paint itself. The first four images all look fairly similar, and the painter is an interesting looking humanoid with this kind of tunnel thing going back into the distance. Not bad. Still can't really decide if I prefer the messy CFG1 or the higher CFG2. The next four take a different approach with the humanoid face on the canvas, and the tunnel is really only there in the CFG2 examples, with CFG1 making it more like a second figure there on the bottom row, with the top row only having the potential for the figure via that black void-like presence. Personally here, I like the extra vacant stare of this last image. Okay, that's enough text to image for now. Time to look at image to image instead. Much the same workflow, apart from we're just using an image instead of an empty latent. Now, we all know about Schrodinger's cat, right? Well, here he is, cat in a box, great. All we need to do now is add the right isotope. Which happens to be this prompt. Now we have a probability wave set up for whether it's going to be a cat, a rodent, 
or both a cat and a rodent. Simple, and no cats get harmed in the experiment too. Far more ethical. I've added a CFG box here as well, because testing across all these things, you don't want to change the CFG on each one. So there, you could just set it in one place. Basically, CFG 9 down to about 5 is OK for image to image, but you may need to play around a bit within that range to capture the right moments. In order to sample the quantum wave progression, we can use the denoise. Here the sampler is using a fixed seed, 22 steps, and a denoise of 0.2 to start with, and we're basically just going to increase that denoise value. With the initial denoise of 0.2, we can see the cat is of course absolutely hideous and only just starting to change. With the denoise up to 0.3, we can see more changes. The jacket is starting to form and the features are becoming a little bit more rodent-like. Interestingly enough, however, when you do 10 steps, it becomes even more rodent-like and you've got some waves in the background and he's got more of a jacket. So fewer steps, more changes. Bit weird. Anyway, with the denoise all the way up to 0.33 and oh, rapid changes are approaching. There's critical rodent features there and the essential tweed jacket. At 0.37 denoise, oh, hold on, what's happening here? It's regressed to cat-like properties. Thankfully, though, it still has some limited dress sense. I think we can also see the wave starting to crystallize. That's handy, it's getting close. Now we're at 0.39 denoise and the transformation is progressing nicely. Those shifty cat features up there in the top left are starting to be smoothly replaced with a more rodent-like visage, which is obviously preferable. Below that, just one step later at 0.4 denoise and we catch a fascinating glimpse of the moment where the face has popped off and a new form is crystallizing and the tie has been upgraded too. Over to the right I have a CFG2 version. The colors are slightly better but hey the cat's got two heads and underneath that is the 10 step option and as you can see it's okay but it hasn't captured that face moment so we've got 10 steps there. We've got some crystals Whereas if we do, this one's on 22 steps, I think that one's much better. It's like pop. The answer at 0.42 denoise is clear. The crystallizing moment has passed and the transformation is almost to the halfway point. Still a bit cat-like, but hopefully we can fix that in the next image. The final two then, and here we have both the cat and the rodent at the halfway point, 0.5 denoise the bottom image being 0.62 denoise, and not much else is happening. The observation has been made. Cat and rodent always existed together in a superposition, thanks to our isotope prompt. Another one then, and this time I'm shifting style because why not? It's a big long prompt, but basically it's for an anime art style image of a figure in a maze with digital minotaurs. The input image is this one, so how do you reckon it will handle the transformation? Well, we can take a look. Like we saw with the cat 0.2 denoise at the top there, and the image doesn't change very much. We are sort of starting to get a little bit of a minotaur there though. And 0.3 denoise, things are heating up a little bit. We've got another minotaur face there. And over here, I've got the 10 step version, just so we can see it's fairly similar, but again, not quite as good, I don't think. At 0.33, things are starting to happen. There are some dark demon dogs. The figure in the middle isn't sure if he's the Minotaur or not, whilst a Minotaur watches from the outside. At 0.37, things are starting to change quite significantly. We're getting a bit of the text, family, creativity and values. The digital Minotaur is getting a bit worried now. What's going on? Because this guy in the middle, he's got horns and... He seems to be drawing energy from the very labyrinth itself. 0.39 denoise this time, and the stars haven't got the text anymore. They're down here. The maze has become more digital. We've got lots of these dogs. The Minotaur is 
this guy over here, he's, ooh, he seems to be taking over and the Minotaur's getting a bit worried. One step later at 0.4 denoise and most of the monsters have gone. There's one little tiny one down there in the corner, but yes, he's definitely taking control of the labyrinth. 0.42 denoise and the Minotaur monsters are back, but the guy in the middle seems a whole lot happier with what's going on now. 0.5 denoise and it looks like he's got some sort of symbiotic control with the labyrinth so now he's not only in control of the maze but probably of the minotaurs too. And finally up at 0.62 denoise he's making all the little minotaur things dance. Yay well done. More style testing this time I've got an exploded recursive pattern in a claymation style with lots of maths symbols and stuff like that so Let's see how these chaotic webs can deal with this input image. Yes, it's totally unlike the prompt, so hmm, this is going to be an interesting one. We'll start with 0.3 denoise first as some changes happened, and you're starting to get the little things going on there. Oh, the funny money symbol, which is interesting. That's the 22 steps, and this time with the 10 step, you've got a little bit more detail on these, which is quite strange. And Still the dollar symbol, and those are a bit more sort of straight, aren't they? At 0.33 denoise, and you're getting a little bit of fracture and some math symbols. So that looks quite cool. I like that version. Up at 0.37 denoise, and the maths is sort of written on things that are floating in the air. Okay, that's not too bad. And it's all around this, and we've got a little guy here. We're, we're getting that claymation character. However, at 0.39 denoise, everything's changed. It's now got a big face and a little bit like with the rodent, we've got this thing breaking out and the explosions, which is pretty cool. Also over here, 22 steps, dropped it down to CFG2 on this one, just to see what that looks like. And the, uh, the colors there are a little bit better and it's still very cool, but I don't know. I don't think the maths symbols are quite as well formed. Let's go back and have a little look. Yeah, I think they're a, a bit more clear on those, even though they are still a bit random. At 0.42 denoise, and it's changed completely again. It's the same claymation character from before, but this time he's sort of erupting through this swirling chaotic landscape. I don't know what's going on there, but hi, little guy. At 0.5 denoise, and he's sort of got his own body even though his brain is still outside his skull. But, you know, that's what happens with claymation characters, isn't it? And then at 0 0.62, he's happily planted himself there. So evidently, it's a very cool place to be. One final thing then, and that's playing with style transfer. Same image to image thing. I'm using this angel lady as an input with the prompt looking like this. So I've got content and change style too. It kind of works. Do let me know if you find any better prompting structures than that, but it's all right for the time being. For the sampler, I've got it set down to just 10 steps at CFG 6.2 with seeds 3 and linear quadratic. And again, after about a minute, you get a result like this. It's sort of anime, I guess. So yeah, a, a little bit of style transfer. Seems all right to me. Have fun. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day, showing us AI in a really British way.